This kind of thing terrifies me. My sister and I shared a small room until her untimely death in 49. We had always fought over a doll that had belonged to our mother when she was young, that had been passed down for us to share. My sister, being two years older and stronger than I was, would often win this struggle. In one of these struggles, it seems that she tore a shoulder and one of the threads that held onto the buttons that were its size had become loose. And it was obvious it was only a matter of time before it would be lost forever. The dress it wore was dirty, but it didn't have any others and it had seen better days. On the day that my sister died, it appeared to weep. What appeared to be tears streaked down its dirty face and dress. I mourned the loss of my sister in a similar fashion. I never moved the doll from its place on her bed where she last left it. As I got older, my parents had grown tired of the grieving. They eventually began boxing up her things, things that were no longer useful to me, and things that none of us could barely look at for any longer. I was not at home when they started packing the doll into the box that was destined for the basement. When I returned, the doll was in its place on the floor where the bed once was. I thought it odd that they would leave the doll as it was and at that point I was 17 years old. Several days later my mother came calling on me. My now or then soon to be husband Bob had arrived to pick me up for our date. She looked at the doll in its place on the floor at first with curiosity in her eyes. I remember this quite vividly. She said, Why did you bring Martha back up from the basement? To which I replied, I didn't. I watched her shift through emotions to try and find the appropriate one to display. The one she went with was horror. I imagined she must have been mirroring mine we said nothing and I left for my date. Whenever the subject of my sister was brought up, the doll would appear to weep. And any time that it was moved, mostly by my mother, who seemed determined in her quest to challenge its inexplicable ability to return to where it belonged, it would always come back and sit just as it was. I will try and make this as brief as possible. My housemate bought me a gollywog for my birthday. I had no idea what possessed him to do so, as I am very politically correct and they have always freaked me out. I found it immediately very unsettling, so I left it on the bottom of my small pile of birthday presents. Anyway. Two nights later, I had the most bizarre dream where the gollywog is in a blind rage and is trying to kill me because I have not given it a nice place to sit in the bedroom and I haven't given it any attention whatsoever. When I woke up, I spoke to my housemates about this and we all laughed as at the time it was pretty funny. This is until shit got a bit realer. This has been happening over the course of a fortnight and a few things have happened. There are instances of it moving by itself. For each account of it moving, I can assure you, there are few conceivable explanations aside from one of my housemates moving it. We have all grilled each other about this continuously and it is causing a lot of friction between us at the moment. It has gotten to the point where the funny part has really worn off and it feels like someone would have confessed by now as we have all stopped laughing about it. Here are some examples of it moving. I had a dream where the doll is on my bedroom floor 
under a pile of birthday presents. The next morning when I wake up, it is now on the other side of the room, right beside my bed. And after this, I am mildly freaked out. None of my housemates will go into my room, as I know that they respect my personal space. After this event, I felt mildly freaked out, and my housemate agreed to take the gollywog into her room. I then go away to Devon for a camping trip, and upon my return, I notice that the doll is on the top of my wardrobe. I was then slightly freaked out and concerned, but just assumed that my housemate wanted to get out of her room, because perhaps it was creeping her out too. Maybe I'm going mad, but I got the sense that it was getting closer to the edge of the wardrobe. And as the days went on, its eyes seemed a bit more visible. I eventually pushed it back so it was right against the wall so that I could no longer see its face from my bed. When my housemate came into my room, she noticed that the doll was on the top of my wardrobe and began freaking out. She then proceeded to get the other housemates in and we all launched into a Spanish Inquisition. A. Because the whole house knows that I'm weird about personal space and they know I don't like people going into my room whilst I'm away. And B. Someone has clearly been trying to mess with everybody. When everyone swears that they have done nothing, the housemate who took it before takes it away and puts it on a toolbox on the living room floor. We go and watch a movie together, go downstairs together, and the whole time, no one left that room, and no one could have snuck away. The doll moved off the toolbox and onto the floor, and was lying on its back, and the toolbox is perfectly flat there really isn't much explanation. In the past few days it has also moved from the toolbox onto the top of another box which is above the table. There are a lot of boxes where we live because we're moving out soon. And then from there it moved to another box about six feet away. The friend who took the doll for the night also woke up covered in these weird little scratches on her face and body the next day. If this were anyone else I would hear this and scoff and disregard it as some shitty creepypasta. But I just want someone to listen to this. I don't really believe in the paranormal. But the way my housemates are beginning to react makes me wonder if there is something weird going on. We have never played a joke on each other like this before, although we have been known to prank each other. But this just seems completely out of character for all of them, particularly because one of my housemates is genuinely distressed by it and she is a terrible actress. I'm seriously getting freaked out. I just hope it doesn't persist once I move out. When I was around three or four, I had a very large collection of dolls. After my family moved into a new house, which is the one we still live in today. Things started to get creepy with my dolls. I didn't get the same feeling about them as I used to. I didn't know how to explain it because I was so young. And now that I'm older, I realize that I thought they were evil. The first night in the new house, I kept feeling like they were watching me. I turned all of their heads backwards looking back on it, it was a really creepy thing of me to do. And in the morning, the doll's heads would not only be facing towards me, all of their heads would be pointing in my direction. This seemed impossible, because I had 50 or more dolls at the time. This was a reoccurring event, and every night for the next three or so years, this would happen frequently. It got to the point where I gave my dolls to my grandmother because 
she collects them. This ended up being one of my faults, because I see my grandmother almost every day. Though they aren't very active for her. She will find one across the other end of the room from where it originally started. She lives alone, so naturally that is quite scary for her. I've recently asked my mum if she was the one who was turning my doll's heads back round, and she said she didn't and thought I had decided to stop doing that. My sister also never went into my room because she was older than me and it was too messy for her liking. Lastly, my dad got into a panic around my dolls and he never went into my room either for that reason alone. I still to this day get the feeling of being watched when I'm near my old room. My stepbrother, who has been staying in that room, will often find his phone all the way across the other side of the room from where he had left it. I will feel a presence at random times of the day, especially in the hall, where most of the bedrooms are. Whatever was attaching itself to my dolls is still in the house, but I don't think it has any intention to harm us. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I've always found myself quite creeped out by dolls, so these stories really resonated with me. What did you guys think of them? Also, a big thank you to the subscriber who submitted their story for the video. It really is appreciated. We're getting ever so close to that 5k goal, which is amazing. You guys are the best, seriously. But something I would like is the ability to reach you outside of the comment section. So if you have Twitter, please consider following me so that we can keep the conversation going as if you want to reach out to me, that is the best way to do so. I also have a really long story that will need to be told over multiple videos instead of just a four hour long beast, but I'm sure it's something that you guys will love, so stay tuned. Also, I would profoundly appreciate it if you guys could like and share this video. Remember, you can also email me your creepy experience to my email which can be found in the description below. But just please remember to give me your consent. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter like I said before. But anyway, for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. I walked up the stairs, and as I passed their door, I heard the worst noise in the world. As someone that was then training to be a teacher, this honestly had me crying like a baby. I heard a little girl screaming, literally screaming for her dad to stop hurting her. She was crying and begging and it absolutely tore me apart. I called the police, which we had done before for noise reasons and told them that it sounded like a small child was being beaten and raped. And if they didn't get here within the next 10 minutes, my husband and I would go down and deal with it ourselves. Three cars, a riot van and social workers showed up in about five minutes. 